Mr. Quincy, welcome to Conversation With. Thank you, Lynn. Great to be here. Well, we've just had a historic uh, Trump-Kim summit, and North Korea is one of the few places, in fact, I believe the only two places in the world where you don't have Coca-Cola. So are we going to see Coca-Cola in North Korea now? Well, it is one of the few places where we're not, uh, we're not in, but I don't think we're going to see it soon uh, in North Korea. And, uh, well, of course, one has to hope that uh, the summit will lead to some degree of normalization and re-entry of North Korea into the community of nations, and then there would be an opportunity to invest, but I don't think it's, uh, unfortunately, in the near future yet. Does Coca get sort of favored uh, deals because you are this very iconic brand? Because there's a sensation that you're always everywhere, and as a result, it means that uh, you know even even countries which are quite closed would perhaps cut you a special deal. Does that happen? I'm, I'm not sure we get special deals. Um, we, we certainly uh, invest in virtually every country because, actually, although people see us as a global business, we're in fact incredibly local. Virtually everything that uh, we sell in a country is made in that country um, and so in order to have coke or one of its other brands we need to build a factory in that country and i think in the end most governments want factory jobs um, um, so we're an attractive investor for them and that's i think why we we're everywhere in the world uh, because we create local jobs what about the trade climate that we're in now uh, we've seen some tensions between the U.S. and China, and in terms of, of markets, I mean, China is a very significant market for you, uh, at least in your Asian region. So do you think that's going to have an impact on Coke? Um, I think to some extent we're, 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 it's a second and third degree effect for us, because obviously if there's trade disruption, uh, prices of certain uh, items tend to go up, whether it's commodities or steel or whatever. Um, but because you know, we make so much of our products locally, uh, we don't tend to be on the front line uh, of trade wars because the jobs are in each of the countries. Uh, I mean, our view on, on trade is no trade deals are perfect, but trade deals have helped create increased prosperity around the world, which is good for all investors. Um, so we would like to see them uh, to the extent they're not perfect, and they very rarely are, we'd like to see them get better, um, but we're not sure that trade wars are the way to go. So you're not pleased with perhaps the steps that are being taken by the Trump administration at the moment? I think what we're, what, what we're in favour of is improving the deals. Um, you know, I think uh, we rec everyone recognises that none of the trade uh, packs are perfect. Uh, and they can all, they've got, all got areas, you know, in the, in the light of day, 10, 20 years on from when they first set up, uh, that they can be improved on in, on many sectors, on many fronts. And, and so our advocacy is let's improve them and let's keep moving forward and create more prosperity. Uh, let's resolve some of the consequences and side effects uh, that these trade deals have had. Uh, but improving them will be a path to greater success uh, rather than removing them. President Trump himself says that he is a great fan of Coke, drinks a lot of it. Do you sometimes have second thoughts about being associated with perhaps certain figures who are, you know, highly political, sometimes controversial? So, you know, when President Trump almost endorses Coke, uh, do you think, oh, that's great? Or do you think, mm, I'm not so sure? No, we, we, I mean, I, I understand he's a, he's a, he's a Diet Coke drinker. Um, and, you know, uh, we welcome all consumers, uh, uh, from the presidents uh, all the way down to the most humblest people. I mean, the, the part of the beauty of the Coca-Cola franchise is its inclusiveness, uh, and that's, you know, why it's so successful around the world. We make it relevant uh, for everyone and everywhere. So we, we welcome all our consumers, and we strive every day uh, to deliver the product uh, that they love to enjoy. But there's no negative association, therefore, with more controversial figures uh, where you might think that it would sort of say taint the Coke brand. I don't think so. I think, you know, in the end, people recognize that uh, the Coke brand stands for something, um, that lots of different types of people uh, enjoy it with lots of different, uh, different political points of view around the world. Um, but the Coke brand clearly stands for something. It stands for optimism about a better future. Uh, it stands for inclusion. Uh, and I think people, that's what people see in the brand. And, and, and buying one and enjoying one uh, is a small act uh, of supporting that idea. Let's move now and look at this part of the world specifically. America still is the bulk of your sales in North America. But um, you have been seeing some reasonable growth here, here in Asia. But it doesn't seem to have moved as quickly as some would have thought. You'd have thought that, you know, as they say, you know, as Asians get more wealthy, we take on a more Western type of consumption. Um, yet sales in Southeast Asia are not terribly strong. Why do you think that is? 
Uh, I think uh, consumers across the world, including Southeast Asia, love Coke, and it's, it's clearly one of the biggest uh, beverage brands in each of those countries. Uh, partly in the context of the Coca-Cola company, we run a franchise business internationally, and in the US we still are the manufacturer and seller, which kind of makes the US look more important in revenues than actually it is in our total business. It's a, in volume terms, it's about a quarter of our business. Uh, Asia uh, is up and is the same sort of size and fast growing. Southeast Asia, we've, we've, you know, the economic crisis and some of the follow-on consequences, I think, have dampened demand across consumer products, um, um, and that that has obviously hurt development. We made. Um, we didn't necessarily have all the right investment plans uh, locally, but we've refocused, uh, we've re-injected a lot of energy, and Asia Pacific has started to grow again, including a number of the countries uh, in Southeast Asia. There are still some more we're focused on. I think over time, what we'll start to see uh, in, in, in Asia is the development more like a broad portfolio in Japan. In Japan, uh, we are strong in five different categories. Sparkling beverages is less than a quarter of our business there. Uh, it's a, Coke's the biggest brand, but actually we have a, we have a number of other brands and, and, and therefore a very wide portfolio. And I think that broad uh, range of categories is what we're likely to see develop across Asia. You broke with your 125-year tradition of having no non-alcoholic drinks. Why move into something that contains alcohol? about Japan though, that was a curious first move for you just very recently where you broke with your 125 year tradition of having no non-alcoholic drinks. Why move into something that contains alcohol? Well I think it, it, it obeys a logic uh, of the local dynamics of the Japanese market. I think it, it's, it's a sign of two things. Uh, one is a recognition that in Japan, the, the local Japanese competitors, who are our main competitors in Japan, uh, have a broader range of beverages, including into alcohol. Uh, and so in order to be competitive, we've tried to look at some of the other categories. But it's also a symbol uh, of the culture we're trying to push, which is to be more experimental. Is this you? Is this Quincy? This is why you're doing this now? You're breaking with these traditions? I mean, you're also now putting out a Coke called Coke Clear, which doesn't even have that brown, iconic brown caramel color anymore. I mean, can't, that can't be Coke. <laughs> well, both ideas are actually uh, came from the local team in Japan. Uh, what I see as my role as the chief executive is, is to lay out the broad strategy uh, and talk about the sort of culture that I think will drive that strategy. We're, we're clear that we've empowered the local country operations uh, to obey the needs and wants of the local consumers. So if that's uh, some rather radical innovation and experimentation, as is the case in Japan, and they believe that that's what they need, then they need, they need to feel empowered to go and do it. And that's what the Japanese team have done. So we're going to see this differentiation where we could possibly have this alcoholic drink in Japan, but only in Japan, and you just won't see it anywhere else in the world? Quite possibly. For Japan, many say that you launched this sort of brand which had some alcohol in it to attract women. Was it meant for women? We've entered this segment uh, of the alcoholic industry because it's actually the closest uh, technically to, to where we are in terms of our business system. So we find it easy to do. The products are generally bought in convenience stores where our other products are bought. It's not, it's not a bar a drink, it's, it's bought in convenience stores and then taken home. So it's the easiest way for us to connect uh, with our existing consumers and, and compete with our competitors. Because targeting just sort of say a, a, a segment like women can be perhaps very lucrative in some ways, but can also backfire. Pepsi had some of those things happen with some of their products as well. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, when one sets up, uh, uh, especially in the beverage industry, um, I'm not sure that uh, the, the, the gender is one of the primary drivers of, uh, of uh, brand segmentation or, or brand identity. It tends to be much more around the occasion and the motivations. Um, some motivation skews more female than male and vice versa. Um, but even iconic drinks like Diet Coke um, would be, you know, 55% female, 45% male. They only skew slightly. Uh, one way or the other. So I think, generally speaking, beverages obey uh, needs and wants that both men and women have.
We have uh, a strand of consciousness now about health here in Singapore. In fact, we have a real diabetes problem. Uh, we have some of the highest rates of diabetes, in fact, on a per capita basis uh, in the world. In fact, only just under the United States. So is it difficult selling something like Coke where you have you know, nine packets of sugar going into one can of Coke? Um, you know, clearly the obesity crisis is a, is a big problem. Singapore, U.S., other other parts uh, of the world, um, and 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 you know, while solving it will take uh, many stakeholders uh, to make it happen, we clearly, as a manufacturer, have a role, and we and we we embrace that idea. We wanna we wanna be part of helping solve that problem, and yet. Uh, allow people to enjoy great tasting beverages. So we've taken a lot of actions, uh, including here in uh, Singapore. Um, we're focused on um, reformulating some of our products, on innovation, on making packages smaller, on diversifying the portfolio into new drinks. So uh, here in Singapore, we've signed up to the Healthy Choices uh, with the Singaporean government. Uh, we've really had a big push between Coke, no sugar. Uh, we're launching new products, tea products with, with no sugar in at all. So we're, we're really striving to find that balance where consumers can still enjoy great tasting products, yet they consume less sugar and, and we, help, uh, we help in the objective to, to help solve the obesity crisis. Why not just reduce the amount of Coke in the normal, you know, Coke can? Why not just cut it down to, you know, seven packets of sugar in a Coke can rather than even that would be a help. Why not do that? Well, what, what we what we still think is that consumers have to have the choice. Whilst there is an obesity crisis, clearly there's a large part of the population that, that doesn't have that, and we think. Uh, enjoying a Coke can be part of a balanced diet, but clearly some people need to take more action than others. So that's why we're, we're, we're investing strongly behind Coke No Sugar. It's growing double digits everywhere around the world, uh, including Singapore. So you wouldn't rule out the possibility, though, that you would, for your classic Coke, reduce the amount of sugar? We're always going to keep available classic Coke, the original formula. With the full amount of sugar? With the full amount of sugar in its original formula, because, you know, if, if you want to enjoy one of those, there's, there's nothing with it, nothing wrong with it with, as part of a balanced diet. There has though, been the question of sugar taxes. Uh, we've seen them implemented in some of the countries in, uh, in Europe. Won't that uh, affect Coke's revenues? Yeah, sugar tax, I mean, any, tax anything, uh, the likely result is the sales of that, that product will go down. Um, I think in the end, one has to ask the self the question, what's the objective of any tax, uh, sugar tax or otherwise? And if it's, um, as stated, part of trying to help people uh, rebalance the, the way they consume, um, I think the data that's coming out is very narrow taxes uh, on few categories in the context of food and beverages where there's lots of other options for people to go to isn't proving to be effective uh, in driving down obesity. There was a recent study uh, done on the Californian tax and what it showed is of course that the, the sugar uh, uh, sparkling beverages went down but actually people bought other food and beverages and so their total calories actually went up. So it's not going to help solve it. Well, many of the governments who have implemented this uh, have said that it's because they feel that the manufacturers are not doing enough themselves, as you say, to regulate it, to give a, a wider range of healthier options. And that's why they've had to resort to something like a sugar tax. Yeah, I mean... Uh, In other words, people like yourself and yeah. the other companies are not doing enough. Yeah, and, and maybe we were too slow. Uh, we, we, we don't, we're not perfect, but uh, we're very clear now on what we need to do. Um, and, you know, our global strategy applicable across the world is to really focus on trying to shape the industry, shape the brand so that they, they still taste great for people, yet we are able to help people uh, consume less sugar and to have a more balanced lifestyle. At what point then in this whole, you know, being with Coke, at what point did they tell you the secret ingredient in <laughs> Coke? I presume you know the secret ingredient in Coke. At what point then in this whole, you know, being with Coke, at what point did they tell you the secret ingredient in Coke? <laughs> I presume you know the secret ingredient in Coke. Yes, I do. So at what point did they tell you, uh, 
you're now you know high up in the food chain enough to get the secret ingredient you can you can be told oh no that was only when i became chief executive so only when you became chief executive when i was when I was number two, I didn't know. Yes, a COO, no, you don't get it at that point. Yes. Only a CEO. COO doesn't get to know, only the CEO. So how did they tell you? Did they give it to you on a little piece of paper and you then had to tear it up and chew it and swallow it? No, we, we made a special trip to the secret location where we have this huge fortress room, uh, with, you know, multiple feet thick of concrete cube. And you go in and, and in there, is a filing cabinet with the, with, the, with the files. It's all written down in old typewriter and scribblings on it. And, and there it is, and you, you can look at it, and you have to sign the register. I came in on this day, and I read this bit. Um, and it's all recorded, and then you look at it, and then we seal it up again. And you, couldn't take a, you didn't take a photograph of it on your <laughs> telephone? No selfies with the recipe. No selfies with the recipe, <laughs> OK. No. But there is a secret ingredient. There is a secret ingredient. There's a secret recipe, and it's held in a, in a very large safe. And, and dare we ask, how many people do you think actually have signed this you know, it's paper? It's a handful. It's a handful. Yes. All the signatures going back decades are all on the page. Would you make a hazard a guess at how many that is in, over the decades? A few tens of people. A few tens of people. Yeah. We're not even talking about hundreds of people. No. And you're able to keep the secret even though you produce it all over the world? Yes, of course. That's part of the, it's part of the, the, the magic of the organization of uh, we make you know, each of the different parts and bring it together in one, one excellent recipe. Technology companies are the ones that seem to be getting all the attention now. And they're sort of the, the real flavor of the day. Do you have difficulty attracting young, clever people who may think that Coca-Cola sounds old-fashioned? Well, uh, we don't have trouble attracting people, so something we're doing right along the way. I think, you know, in the end, it's still an incredibly iconic uh, brand around the world. Uh, in most a great place to work type surveys around the world, we, we always score very highly. Um, so I think people see um, the incredible uh, history and foundation, the ability to do lots of things. Um, clearly, if you want to write code, then you know the, the tech company is a, is a different place. But people who are interested in creativity, the consumer environment around, uh, Coke is still a very uh, attractive place to come to work. So if I were to ask you, do you think, uh, which of these companies do you think are going to be around in 125 years? In other words, as long as Coke has. Airbnb, Uber, Google, which do you think is actually going to be sticking around? Um, I, I'm not sure I would bet against any of them, but I, you know, um, and I think you know the, 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 the success that each of those three have had is, is, is incredible. You know, but the longevity of Coca-Cola is quite extraordinary. I mean, if you go back and study the survival rate of companies over time and go back, you know, 40 or 50 years and look at the top 50 companies in the world, I think we were number 21. Um, of the 50. Today, it's only a handful of those, those top 50 that even exist today. Uh, and we're one of them. Uh, actually, we were still 21 in the last ranking. So I think the incredible longevity of Coca-Cola um, it, it stands out, and that's, of course, our objective. So the, the chances of any of those three uh, being here in 50 years is statistically low. I'm sure one of them will be. The chances are there won't be, there won't be all three. And, and as you look at the history of the tech industry over the last 20 years, those that have had seemingly unassailable positions have then been disrupted by someone else. Uh, so I think it's, it's a vibrant and competitive marketplace. And what I say to uh, our organization is it's about us working to stay relevant for our consumers every day with our brands because the statistical fact is the chances are more people fail than succeed. Okay, now the, the housewife though might ask you uh, this very simple question and that is, you know, on every do-it-yourself uh, guide you will find on YouTube numerous instructions on how you can take a bottle of cloak and clean your toilet with it, and you will get it to be sparkling clean. The question is then, is that any good for us to consume? Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, any, any product, uh, whether it's Coke or any of the other beverages, is either acidic, slightly acidic or slightly alkali. Um, so if you want to have anything clean, I mean, actually, if you put liquid on anything and, and wipe it, you tend to 
uh, you tend to wipe it clean, including uh, with water. So there's absolutely no reason not to consume Coke or any of the other beverages we or any of our competitors sell. So what you're saying is, is that essentially this would be the case for any soft drink. Yeah, I mean, if you want the simple experiment, get a lemon, squeeze some lemon juice and then try it with an orange or try it with some pineapple juice. You'll find that all of those liquids, ultimately, it will wipe stuff off. So it, beverage, beverages are totally safe to consume. So you would, you would assure them that it's perfectly all right to consume Coke? Absolutely. Mr Quincy, thank you very much for being on Conversation With. Thank you, Lynn. Great to be here.